Grand Theft Auto, an action-adventure game, developed the first Grand Theft Auto by DMA Design and published by Take-Two Interactive, a.k.a. Rockstar Games. Grand Theft Auto has seen a lot of stories taking place, 80s, 90s, and even the 2000s, and even the 2010s. At this point, with, with, a lot of, with a lot of iterations of Grand Theft Auto, everybody's big favorite are, are these following titles. Grand Theft Auto Vice City, Grand Theft Auto 3, and Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. It's clear that Grand Theft Auto was very, was very popular in its early years. However, we need to talk about a Grand Theft Auto game that is incredibly underrated and nobody never heard of. What I'm talking about is Grand Theft Auto Advance, or GTA A, or GTA Advance. Wait, wait. GTA Advance? Well, let, let's talk about this. The reason why I know about this game is that I have seen various various videos about about GTA Advance. And it and also there's also a lot of gameplays on the internet which you can check out. Just type in Grand Theft Auto Advance and and, and you're on your way to find out for yourself. However, Grand Theft Auto Advance was incredibly underrated and and we knew that and we know that is because it didn't it didn't seem any good acclaim. Why? Why is this? We're going to find this out. So let's talk about about how Grand Theft Auto Advance is about. Grand Theft Auto Advance was originally launched in North America and in European on October 26, 2004 in North America and EU on the 29th of April 2004. In North America on on October 26, 2004, it was around the same time as the highly acclaimed Grand Theft Auto San Andreas launched. Grand Theft Auto Advance was was supposed to be planned as 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 a Game Boy Advance port of Grand Theft Auto 3. It would be about Claude continuing to work with the Leone crime family rather than rather than working up the criminal underworld to get his revenge on Catalina. However, the plan was scrapped in favor for for G, for for the Game Boy Advance port to have its own story on Game Boy Advance. And this is where we lead to to the introduction of GTA Advance. GTA Advance is the only GTA 3 era slash 3D universe game which does not have a PlayStation 2 port, and the only game in the entire series not to have been released for a console from the PlayStation series, except Grand Theft Auto London 1961. GTA Advance is the only Grand Theft Auto game to launch exclusively on long plot on one platform, with the with the exception of, of the game that I just said. GTA London 1961, and the only game to solely be on a Nintendo platform. Just like just like the previous counterparts of Grand Theft Auto in the 2D universe, Earth, as well as the expansion of, of Grand Theft Auto 1, GTA Advance is played in the top-down perspective. The game is set to take place in the year of 2000. This is a prequel to to GTA 3, which take place in 2001. It's taking place in Liberty City. Based off of the inspiration of New York City. 
as we already know where where it went. Like G GTA One and Two, the game is still played in a top down perspective. So, and also this is this is the only game to not. So this is the only game not made by Rockstar North, but it's going to be it's developed by Digital Eclipse. No, not not Rockstar North, Digital Eclipse. And I have to say, they did a good job on the series actually. They did a good job. But but most people would honestly disagree otherwise. Anyway, the story is all about is all about Small time criminal, a small time criminal named Mike, and his partner named Vinny. Both, both of their last names are truly unknown. Anyway, anyway, this is all about small time criminal Mike and for the more connected criminal partner Vinny of leaving Liberty City with him and retiring from all of their life of crime. However, Vinny convinced Mike to do the last few jobs for the Mafia before cutting ties with them severely and completely. But we don't know which of the Liberty City Mafia families Vinny and Mike work for. The records were sparse, according to the criminal hysterian. Through many decades in Liberty City, the Portland district has been carved up by the Sindaco, Leone, and Forelli crime families. But by 1998, during the, event, during the events of GTA Liberty City stories, the Leone crime family became the most prominent mob on the island. And another part is that, is that there is another GTA advance video about it, and somebody just told me that Vinny and Mike were working with the Leone crime family. And this was because that they were getting jobs from Mama's Restaurant in, in St. Mark's, Mark's, which is located at Portland Beach. Yes. So it's actually revealed that, that the Leone crime family were Vinny's true employers. Get seriously exposed. Big time. Seriously. The Mafia is really the, the Leone crime family. Anyway, anyway, um, anyway, Vinny convinces Mike to do work for the Leone Mafia crime family in order to achieve this goal. However, however, after several jobs, Vinny is seemingly killed in a car bomb explosion. So, so let's talk about it one by one. So, before Vinny and Mike began to flee Liberty City, they must get simple stuff before planning their big escape. Vinny first have Mike get a get a a getaway car from the two, a bravado banshee, a, a particular fast and slick, very great sports car, which is which is very common throughout Grand Theft Auto Three and LCS. And really GTA Advance because that's good because it's very good and much good and fast. After this, Vinny sent Mike on the Leone crime family mafia errand, paying dues in Trenton to pay back the mob what they owe. Little to a fault, um, Vinny told Mike not to ask any questions, so Mike would keep all very quiet as well as dishing out a punishment from the South Side Hoods, which were located in Trenton moments after, as well as getting fake IDs and such before making their big escape. However, Mike arrived in Chinatown, only to find Vinny, who is not here, until he was contacted by Vinny on his pager saying that to meet him over at Callahan Point outside Greasy Joe's. However, by when Mike got to the Callahan Point with the getaway car, Mike's world was completely been turned upside down. 
as Mike was approaching the popular Callahan Point Diner Greasy Joe's, he would he would see an explosion between between a few cars. And and the car exploded with Vinny seemingly killed. With Vinny apparently killed in the head and the cops been pissed off by an unknown source. Mike fled the crime scene. He, he was supposed to go back to the hideout to lie low, but he was contacted by, by Vinny's his, um, associate, Anna Leone's associate, known as 8-Ball. He told Mike to stay away from his own hideout as the cops were looking for him, so he must go to 8-Ball's place up in Harwood and Portland Beach. So... So, at the matter of which, itch, 8-Ball would aid Mike to find the bomber who was responsible for Vinny's death. Until 8-Ball pointed his finger to Vinny's old friend, the bartender, named Johnny. As Mike would continue to, to work with 8-Ball and soon on um, Vinny's old friend, the bartender, Mike would continue playing handyman, but soon and later, Johnny would begin and re and began receiving messages from another gang based on Staunton Island, the Uptown Yardies, led by King Courtney. During the mission, show the money. He, Johnny had to scrounge up a lot of money to pay King Courtney back. Mike did this, did the whole mission, but unfortunately, as he got back to the bar, he found the bartender completely massacred in a pool of blood. He heard the killer's car and, and pursued it all the way to Staunton Island on the, on the now-completed Callahan Bridge. After, after crossing the bridge to, to Staunton Island... At this point, ain't Mike spot spot some yardies. He's, it was a yardie car leaving Johnny's bar, and in a rush, following following them to their leader, the suspicious car went into Newport Docks. The yardies went into Newport Docks, and this is where Mike confronts the yardies. Their own leader, King Courtney himself. However, unfortunately, according to King Courtney, by the time Mike got to Newport Docks, Courtney denied involvement in Johnny's murder, claiming that his men were only been sent to, to collect money Johnny owed to him. But unfortunately, but unfortunately, when they got there, they found the man dead. Or to Courtney's response, they found they found the man dead and come and came back here. Sorry if I was a little rusty on that little quote. So, so trying to help who who who's Vinny's bomber and trying to help King Courtney to find the the money that was stolen from that that was owed to him. Mike began doing jobs for the Uptown Yardies, mostly due to their disputes between the Colombian cartel, this time led by a man named Cisco. First of all, first off, um, Mike would help out in a street race, an illegal street race against the Yakuza and win, and, and, would, and would later drive in a real Formula One racing car. Then... Steal some Colombian coffee off of couriers moving around the city. Then ambush a meeting between the cartel members and lieutenants before confronting Cisco himself in Belleville Park. After learning Mike, after Mike learned that the Yardies were simply using Mike, Mike would begin would would, would once again swap employers. Cisco would 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 uh, would have Mike. Distribute distribute some smuggled shoes made for drug smuggling, and 
and then destroyed a factory between of surveillance and then kidnapped the the kidnapped the niece of the Yakuza boss, Asuka Kasan, Yuka Kasan. Meaning that meaning meaning that Mike has to do a kidnap mission. However, thankfully Mike was was able to undo it much more quickly when he began working with the Yakuza under King under under Asuka Kasan's request. He would he would undo his kidnapping from that he did for Cisco and then and then later doing jobs for Asuka uh by 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 beating up uh, a star quarterback at killing pimps and other kinds of stuff during during the time. However, by by the time when when Asuka gave Mike information about about the bomber, Mike would go to Torrington to looking for the killer, only to find him dead in his own apartment. But there was a note about an exchange in Shoreside Vale in Wichita Gardens. Not far not far and too late, eight, Mike would head towards Shoreside Vale, but more trouble came ahead. As the Mafia, the Leone crime family, he felt felt hurt after after Mike's betrayal of the family. So they were going after him. Not just them, but the police were also onto him too. So you must cross the bridge to Shoreside Vale and and head towards and head towards Wichita Gardens for that deal. Only to find only to find out that there is an ambush. Mike will get contacted by 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 Cisco, where he is where he is at his private jet at Francis International Airport. He Mike would learn that that the deal is an ambush. This would this ended up this would end up up into into a problem, and and Cisco told Mike that that a man was kill was working for him, but he was but he was upset about his death over like how Mike was over Vinny's. Throughout throughout um throughout. Throughout the short side veil side missions and such, um, Cisco would help Mike to aid a Cisco would, would help Mike out and then flee Liberty City altogether to to Columbia. Uh, unfortunately, Cisco would not be alive too soon as after after doing a few tasks for Cisco, Mike would see a horrible sight in in Cisco's jet. Cisco himself, completely dead and and assassinated. It, seriously, seriously. And he would see the killer's car on the run. Uh, we don't know who it was, but as Mike ran the car off the road. He finally real. He finally knew the truth. What was going on? It was none other than, you guessed it, Vinny. We just couldn't believe it. We saw Vinny blew up in his own car at at Greasy Joe's, but but as but as but it was actually revealed that that Vinny actually betrayed Mike. Actually. Seriously, after everything Mike had done for Vinny up that at this point, seriously, after a big shootout between Mike and Vinny, Mike would would kill Vinny for good, but unfortunately, he didn't heed Vinny's warning. With Vinny dead, Mike became a prophet, meaning every single gang, including the mafia, the Yardies, Yakuza. Triads and such will begin to descend on the young Mike, whose options are now vanishingly small. 
So Mike has a plan by by become by by killing all of his rival enemies before fleeing the country altogether by taking Cisco's jet at the airport. Mike would get contacted by his, one of his friends, Eight Ball. He meet up with he met up with Eight Ball in, at a restaurant in Pike Creek, but the meeting was quickly turned into an ambush by the Colombian cartel, who thought Mike was responsible for Cisco's death. Seriously, and and who and who made this ambush? It was a new cartel boss. We don't know whose name is it, but his name was completely unknown. Mike told the new cartel boss that it really wasn't Mike who who killed Cisco. Someone someone did. Probably it was Vinny at this point because because honestly, probably he might be responsible for for Johnny's death too. Oh, it figures. So that's two people Vinny killed. Cisco and Johnny the bartender at seriously right now. It was already bad enough that that Vinny betrayed Mike. Does did he really did he really have to kill two people? Oh my god, I swear. So that's why the car was about to go up. So that's why his car was on the move, trying to flee what he did. How dare he? During the fighting in Pike Creek, this is where we get to know why is Eight Ball's hands in bandages. Well, let's let's see. So, during the fighting, Eight Ball's hands were badly burnt by the fire. His legs were busted, and he can't move. He was later arrested by the LCPD the police after fly, after Mike fled the scene. Fled the scene to pursue the new cartel boss, who was responsible for the attack. After running the boss off the road and threatening his life, either it's uh, kill or or spare his life, Mike would learn that it, it is the Yardies who really wanted Mike dead, King Courtney in particular. So he must get a lot of ammo if Mike wants to take down his final rival before fleeing the country altogether. And... Both he must kill some yardy thugs, and then began to confront King Courtney himself. Somewhere, Cedar Grove. I think it's in Cedar Grove or Conquin Dam. It don't matter. After, after, after King Courtney, he told Mike to stay clear and away from him. King Courtney's told him, told Mike that he is all stressed out, and Mike is is the victor. So that means Mike can flee the city, with all the money he has he had earned at this point during during his during his time in Liberty City. But he needs to think of something quick, as the cops and the military and the National Guard were rolling in. He can't make it out of the city by the highways. The cops would have roadblocks up. So he must take Cisco's jet at the airport. He wished he had a tank to get through all the resistance he had coming for him. So he did, and so he has. Still in an army rhino tank, Mike would Mike would push through the pursuers in the in the LCPD police department, boarded Cisco's jet, and managed to fly out of the city without somehow getting. Sh- Without getting shot down by the military, he renaissances his phone friends and heads to Colombia of all places to start a new life with his wealth and his freedom from Liberty City. And that's it. With with Mike in Colombia, this mean this means Mike is free and he has the money. And he has all the money he has from delivering fares, doing vigilante work, paramedics, even firefighter work. It doesn't matter. 
what's more great and what's more great and awesome and interesting is that the continuity continues and we can finally found out out that we could finally find out why eight balls hands were 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 in bandages yes. and also the and also we now we now know about the arrest of eight ball helped to set up the opening cutscenes of GTA 3 where he escapes the police transport with Claude. Then there's Asuka Kaysen's lack of trust towards Claude in GTA 3 may have come from her later discovering Mike had kidnapped her niece, Yuka, prior to, to working for Asuka. Then King Courtney, leader of the Uptown Yardies, may have been more likely to betray Claude in GTA 3 after nearly being killed by Mike, who had attempted to help. Then Salvatore Leone is completely certainly the leader of the Mafia Mansion as both Ferrelli and Sadako families have suffered heavy, heavy losses in 1998. The fake death of Benny may have been further Salvatore's paranoia following betrayals of, of, of CJ, Carl Johnson, and Uncle Leone. Yep, that's it. That's the whole continuity. This is why... King Courtney and the Uptown Yardies betrayed Claude. This is how Asuka Kassan's lack of trust. This is um. This is how. This is exactly how Asuka Kassan's lack of trust towards Claude and GTA Three may have came from from her dis from her discovery about Mike kidnapping her her niece Yuka prior to working for Asuka anyway. And this is and this is how everything all happened. This is how GTA 3 had been made. Seri seriously. Even though Salvatore Leone wasn't present in GTA Advance, he is still certainly the leader of the Leone crime family mafia during circa 2000. And as we already know, because both Sindaco and Ferrelli families suffered hev heavy losses. And the fake death of Benny may have Fervor Salvatore's paranoia following the betrayals of <sighs> Honestly, this is honestly this is huge. This is this is very huge. This is so this is so wow. Seriously. And and this up uh, after after the game have launched GTA Advance received mixed reception reviews. According to review a greater metric or Metacritic, I'm sorry if I pronounced it wrong. Including publication Game Informer, GameSpot, and IGN. Metacritic puts the game a 68 out of 100. While most, while GameSpot gives it a six point five out of ten, but the main question is, why is GTA Advance so forgotten and and underrated? Also, what is going on? What what's what was the problem? Well, the reason is that is that Grand Theft Auto Advance traces back to the two D era of GTA One and Two. Another problem is that it's the radio stations. The radio stations and the vehicles are pretty repetitive and aren't, and aren't so great. And the music is pretty bad. And named the radio tracks very short and repetitive. Especially, especially one guy, especially Jeff Gersman of GameSpot commented on the camera movements whilst driving. That it doesn't zoom out far enough to give you a good view of the road. I mean, you can totally understand why. The radio stations, I understand because why only have one song, one one radio station soundtrack? Seriously, seriously, right now, seriously, I guess that explains why it isn't isn't good. Another reason why GTA Advance has been forgotten and and it's not really recognized is that. Is that everyone thinks that GTA Advance takes place in another sort of city, like in GTA 2. However, it takes place in the same place as GTA 3, Liberty City. 
H how do we know? Is because you must you must roam the street to see what is changed or not. not. Now, anyway, because of because of hardware limitations and constrain constraints in GTA Advance, some some of the some of the buildings and such were cut. Greasy Joe's was cut to make way for just an empty building lot. Honestly, it's a bad idea. It was bad. But then again, graphic limitations. Then there was the rail networks. They were at both... The rail networks and subway networks were both absent in GTA Advance because of, because of hardware limitations. Even some other stuff were, were absent. Like the old school hall near the Callahan Bridge and other certain stuff, those are absent too. Seriously. Also, also what's more unusual and much more uh, um, uninteresting is that there's a there was some continuity errors bounding between some games of, of uh, t taking place in Liberty City, GTA. GTA LCS, for an example, taking place in 1998. Eight. Um, 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 most of the, some of the districts and such don't have that built. Don't have many buildings. Um, also, somebody told somebody told us on a Subway Surface X Gamer video called GTA 3 LC 2000 GTA Advanced 3D Style that there's a continuity error between error between between the three games. Eames. I'm talking about the Harwood district. You um um in in G in GTA LCS the Harwood ha Harwood the Harwood district has um dirt has a dirt bike area near near the Borgnine Taxi Building. Then in GTA Advance Harwood has a lot of buildings. We don't know why though, but we did saw it in a GTA three Advance three D mod. And then in GTA 3, year 2001, Har the Harwood district near the Boring Nine Taxi is just an empty lot. That's all I'm going to say. Also, wh how, why is GTA Advance taking place in 2000? Well, honestly, um, Liberty City 2000, um, during the events of GTA Advance, this is where, we, this is where the, the road network transportation is. Keeps keeps continuing. Um, the problems. Um, during GTA LCS, um, the ferry service had has been shut has has temporarily shut down because it was because it was under a, it was under a threat because of the construction work between the new Callahan Bridge and the new Porter Road Tunnel. So worker strikes, which were led by Jane Hopper, had started in progression. Despite their efforts, however, the ferry service will eventually be demolished and destroyed and be shut down and made way for the new Porter Road Tunnel in the Harwood District sometime during, during 2000 and 2001. Yeah, during Liberty City, during Liberty City, um, GTA, Liberty City 2000, GTA Advance, the Porter Road Tunnel is, is still under construction and, and it's not done yet. It. While the Callahan Bridge has been completed, it the Porter Road Tunnel isn't isn't done yet. So, so they after what happened in 1998 when Tony Cipriani and Donald Love made the huge terrorist attack in Liberty City, what they did in Fort Staunton was was devastation, murder. And scary. So, thanks to Donald Love and Tony Cipriani during 1998, the Porter Road Tunnel has been pushed back, has been pushed and was halted to make so they can get rid of all that all that wreckage in Fort Staunton, then to make way for that new newly newly um uh constructed building in Fort Staunton. 
So there, the the plan was to set to set a deal with the Pan Atlantic Construction Company in Fort Staunton, which in reality was revealed it was a front for the Colombian cartel to make a new to make a new building. The process began in two thousand or nineteen ninety nine, and it is still going on by the year two thousand one. And at this point. <clears throat> Um, after clearing up all the wreckage and and also and also clearing up what was left of of the original Fort Staunton, the Portal Road Tunnel was has had construction work has been is is still is still nearly is still is still under construction during some time, but by. But by October, by by late October and early November of two thousand one, the Porter Road Tunnel was completed. After the mission, last request wasn't us, and then finally a drop in the ocean during the Donald Love missions. Thankfully, though, the Porter Road Tunnel became became a huge partying success. So this means. Ferry service is gone. Nope. No need for ferry service in Liberty City anymore. Or, although Mayor Miles O'Donovan did retain ferry service, he said, but unfortunately that that promise had had broken when the Porto Road Tunnel oh, had had completely demolished the whole entire whole entire ferry service. It's to make way for the Porto Tunnel between 1998 and 2000 and 2001. And so, at this point, so at this point, honestly, I think it's best that that a Porter Road tunnel should have been much more useful than ferry service as it takes too long and nobody can't wait that long in the first place anyway. As a curiosity, although, although, GTA Advance isn't in 3D though. You can play GTA Advance as a mod uh, on your PC. Branded GTA Advance 3D. It's basically Grand Theft Auto 3. LC2000 GTA Advance style, which can be played still. However, you must get rid of some of the, some of the modded stuff on the Clio folder in order to play it. If you want to see, if you want to see the, the the good look around video about GTA Advance, Subway Surface X Gamer has made about has made a video about that. Link is in the video description. And anyway, even though I never heard of GTA Advance, and even though it was launched at the time, I was still a baby at the time. I never heard of it, but now after I heard about it. It seems very fun to play, but at the matter of which they got rid of some of the stuff, like the road network, like the rail networks, the subway, and such, and that's pretty sad. But once again, hardware limitations. If they want to do, if they want to do a story about 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 Mike who worked for the for the Leone crime family, then why did they, they then why did they use um? GTA San Andreas engine to create GTA GTA Liberty City 2000. Seriously, do that. Why don't y'all do that? Why didn't Rockstar do that? I don't know. Probably didn't ever. Probably didn't ever thought of that. But, but it's just a business. Well, let me know in the comments. Do you remember GTA Advance when you were a kid? What do you think Rockstar could have done to make the game more successful? Thank you guys for watching, and until next time, and as always, stay tuned.